what happened is that this this pumping station was providing most of Wantage's water, a lot of Wantage's water, and, and our water. But because of all the development, it wasn't enough, enough water for the future. So they, they're building a pipe. They're putting it in now all the way from Wantage, Larks Hill, through the field for six kilometers to that spot. So they're going to run the water through gravity to that spot and then pump it up to the top of that hill to a reservoir. And so, in order to build this, uh, this pipe, they have to dig up the ground, obviously, for six kilometers. And they precede that with an archaeological study, in case they're going through something that's going to be uh, art archaeologically valuable. They don't want to destroy it, which is very good of them, basically. Yeah. So, f from starting September, they started an archaeological excavation and they dug up a strip about 10 meters wide all the way from Wantage to there. And that spot, I brought you here because it's quite easy to see from here, that is the fine, that's the end of it. And at that spot they found an Iron Age settlement. Iron Age means 3,000 years ago. And they found the typical kinds of things you find in an Iron Age settlement. Round foundations of big round um, sort of rondavos where they lived, uh, pits where they kept the uh, grain and so on, burials as well. And further up that hill, which we'll see when we drive up there, is was a Roman settlement. So this is very ancient. And along the way from Wantage they found a lot of uh, tools from the Neolithic age, which is 6,000 years ago. So wh what it means really is that people have been living in this area, particularly, you went over the brook, particularly near the water along the brook because of course everybody needs water. And this ridgeway was the main highway, it was the M4 of this part of England for 10,000 years. So people used to be walking, traveling along there for 10,000 years. And so these villages right near the Ridgeway were very prime places to live because you were close to the, the road and you had water. And so this area, this whole area, including Wantage, has been inhabited for perhaps 10,000 years, maybe longer. And they found tools and pottery and so on from all that period. But what we're going to look at here is Iron Age, 3,000 years ago, and Roman, which is 1,000 years ago. They dug up, they found, I think, 26 skeletons just along this. And I'm hoping, I'm going to try to get all those skeletons reburied in the village, in our village here, because we don't like the idea of them being taken away and, uh, you know, just being put in some industrial grave somewhere, a mass grave. And, of course, we can't put them where they were because that's where the water pipe is going to go. But we're looking for a place and we're going to talk to Thames Water whether they will, uh, whether they will uh, pay for <laughs> this, this, uh, this burial, reburial. So we'll have a memorial in Celtic and a memorial in Latin where they're buried. That's, that's the hope. The fact is most archaeological digs are done in special places. They, for instance, you know the White Horse, on yeah. the top of the White Horse is Uffington Castle. Yeah. So they've had a lot there. Just above Letcombe Regis, which you can just see from here, is Segsbury Camp, which is Iron Age. Those are both Iron Age. And so archaeologists spent a lot of time up on the top of the Ridgeway in these camps, which were really used for refuge in times of danger because they've got big banks to stop people running out and for exchange markets for sheep and so on but they lived down here on the plain near the water and very few archaeological digs have been done here on the plain where people actually lived for thousands of years and so this is unique in many respects and uh, our village and the whole area has been very excited about it 
and we're waiting to see now the the analysis of what they found skeletons the uh, artifacts you know little pottery combs and so on this will take another year and then there'll be a report and uh, we will we will understand exactly the the time they were there you know what was going on uh, why they were buried in some very peculiar ways and so on so all of these will perhaps have answers in about a year so if you like we'll we'll uh, go up the road and just have a little look at the at where they've been digging which is now covered over nevertheless you get a feeling for where these people lived i think it's quite a nice thing to do so it's uh, another five kilometers of excavation from wantage before it reaches this final section where they found almost everything of, of interest in this section here but 90 95 percent of it was found here yeah so does it mean they've had to halt the works until the oh yes skeletons yes can be relocated this finished in this finished in uh, end of march no, no end of february um, since then they've been starting to lay the pipe so they're already laying it along there and they'll reach the pumping station down there uh, by the end of the year probably you can see actually they are one of the one of the things they're doing is going under the Letcom brook which is a very uh, unique brook in that it's a chalk stream and it's considered uh, you know highly vulnerable to to uh, damage and so they're going 40 meters and where you can see that crane 40 meters under the brook which runs there so they're going very deep there they, they've got an automatic little you know little uh, what would you call it a, a sort of mole that goes right under the and comes up no people have to do it then they pull through the, the pipe and so on and you can see them working on it over there. In the beginning, we didn't know what they were doing, and I walked up to them and said, what, what are all these people doing in orange sort of jumpsuit? Oh, we're doing the archaeology. And that's when uh, my interest and the village's interest really, really became, uh, you know, apparent. They, they had pretty strict instructions to... Uh, stick to the pipe so they didn't want the archaeologists going off to the side and wasting you know money obviously and time because their job is simply to go where the pipe is and they started off by doing a geophysical examination of the whole the whole length using drones and so on to try and see where the earth had been disturbed along the way and that gives them an idea yeah. of where archaeological finds might be looked for and they generally then would go in where the geophysical survey showed possibilities and do some digging there they only went down 18, 18 inches uh, and, and very often they found nothing but uh, they discovered in this area that although the pipe is just below there that this area on the left showed a lot of geophysical um, uh, differentiations and so on which indicated that there was something quite uh, quite a lot of archaeological stuff going on and so what happened is right here on the left which is now covered with bricks but before they did a, a lot of digging here for a couple of months and this is where they found the Roman settlement Roman settlement is right here and these are the pipes by the way that are being put in obviously so how many bodies did they find here they found interestingly enough right up by the road there they found I think it was six bodies in sh shallow graves only a foot down and they concluded that these were probably slaves because they didn't give them the full treatment mm. but then further down and I'll show you where they found another 18 skeletons which were dug into this hard chalk so it was a great deal of work 
so those were no doubt not slaves. So we had them there, we had the, the other burials, and, and in the middle here we had the sort of foundations that were left from little uh, houses, grain stores and so on, the sort of pits, the sort of typical thing that a Roman settlement would have. Now some people think that actually they would be more likely to have l buried their people here and maybe had some, some outhouses, but that the main uh, habitation area would be the village which is down there because this is a bit far from the water you know water yeah. was the essential thing in those days well it still is um, but anyhow this was the site of the Roman settlement and I'll show you a little bit later down there where those graves were <laughs> the posts there are the precise points so I think there was some discussion that they would try to avoid where the main uh, graves were, which are straight ahead of us, in order as, as a mark of respect. So they're going along the edge here. The, the blue, the, the, these. This is where they found the 16 Roman graves that were dug very deep into this very hard chalk. And I actually came here before they'd filled it in because it was very dangerous with children and dogs and so on. So. They were very impressive. They were hacked out of these, this very hard chalk, nearly six foot deep, six foot long, and they found, you know, lots of skeletons, as I said, some with their heads removed after death, some with coins in their mouths and so on. So this was a prime area for Roman burials. And the number of involved means that probably this settlement was here for maybe two or three hundred years, you know, a lot of people were here. We're talking about the Romans, I think, arrived around about 100 and stayed till about 400 AD. So the, the analysis they're doing now will, will try to determine exactly when it was, you know, was it around nearer 100 or nearer 400 AD that they lived in. The sort of chalk hill they had at Avebury and other places which was made out of chalk, so they were white. These wonderful white beacons. There's another one over there. Do you see that? Over yeah. there? Yeah. One there, one there. And they would love to get their hands on it and see whether it was just chalk or whether, as in Avebury, there's something underneath. But unfortunately, that takes money. <laughs> Try and get permission from the landowner for us local volunteers to just to take a meter by a meter and try and dig down a few meters and see. So this was Roman then, not Iron Age? This is Roman. This is Roman. Yeah. Along the way here, they did find, uh, they did find tools and so on from the Neolithic age, which is, it went Neolithic, bronze, iron. Iron was about 1000 BC, and then you had the Bronze Age, Iron Age. Before the Bronze Age was the Neolithic, which I think finished at around 2000 BC, about 4000 years ago. Okay, so we've got, now that's an interesting little thing, that is probably a post hole. It doesn't look like much, but that's a Roman post hole. A post means they put wooden posts in for some sort of uh, structure. Could have been a home, could have been storing grain or something like that. We see further down um, the Iron Age post hole. So they can tell how old a hole is, that's quite impressive. <laughs> well I think the they also from the the shape of you know they they dug up a lot of Iron Age stuff. They know what the uh, they know what the post holes look like and the, how they're arranged and so on. And there are still some there, and I hope they haven't got rid of them. But this is quite a nice spot to have a to have a a dwelling, isn't it? <laughs> Very dramatic. So as you say, the Ridgeway here was the kind of thoroughfare. Oh yes, the Ridgeway was the thoroughfare of southern England. It goes from uh, 
around Avebury all the way up to close to Milton Keynes. You know, it's about a hundred miles long. And it was safe to live below, because weren't kind of bandits and stuff more likely to attack you from above? Was it <laughs> well, I imagine that, uh, that security was always an issue. And that's, I, I believe, why they had these camps spread along, like Sigbury. Sigbury camp is right over there. That just on the left, you see that big, big bunch of trees. That's Sigsbury camp, Iron Age again, thousand, three thousand years ago. And then the next one is the White Horse, Uffington Castle, which is about a mile along the top of that. And they would be places of refuge. If you saw trouble around, you would go there and bring all your stuff and your people and fend it off and then come back to your houses. I presume that's what happened. But they didn't live up there. They didn't. They lived down here. There's another one here. So you can see there's a sort of a circular effect of this. So this would have been a dwelling uh, 3,000 years ago. This could have been one of the graves where there, there was a woman found buried like this on her back with uh, her legs open. And uh, very shocking, actually. Her hands had been cut off, sorry, her feet had been cut off and put under her right arm as she lay there. Uh, it's all very mysterious. Uh, they don't know wh whether it was a custom of this area or whether she had been... Uh, and actually underneath her, underneath the soil, underneath her, they found a little child, a skeleton of a child. So the whole thing is mysterious. Perhaps they will come up with an answer after they've analyzed it. But I think this was one of the s places where they found a skeleton. It might have been that poor woman. So actually they're going up there. They're not going along there. You see the next marker is there. The next blue marker. Yeah, so uh, that's why we can't rebury the, the bodies where they were because this 30 ton machine is going to go right through this like back. That's Letcombe Bassett, which is at the source of the Letcombe Brook. The spring is just in the middle of the village. So it's been a place that, favoured place to live for thousands of years. So between the stream and the ridgeway? Yes. And in fact, <coughs> I remember reading King Alfred's will. <coughs> He left, he left his kingdom to, <coughs> to his sons and so on, but he left his Wantage farm, because he was born in Wantage, to his wife. Uh, rather like Shakespeare leaving his, his second bed to his wife, not his first. But uh, I've often thought that his farm would have incorporated the head of the stream, because he was the most important landowner in the area. So I often think that we are here are living on King Alfred's farm. It may be fanciful, but that's, I think it's a possibility. <laughs> and in fact, we knew nothing about our village history <coughs> until about 1100 when, when uh, ancient records started detailing who the lord of the manor was and so on. But uh, I think a lot of people, including me, assumed that around about 1100 was when people, not long after King Alfred started living here, but one of the exciting things about this project was that people have been living here for thousands of years. <laughs> so it was the discovery of our ancient history that was very exciting for us. that the water level of this Letcombe Brook will be 
higher, you know, it'll have a good supply of water, better than it had before. Okay. So that was their selling point, although the real reason, of course, was that they had to get a lot more water to supply wantage. So, what, so what, where's the water coming from that they are going to...? This water that we're going to get will come from the Thames via, uh, I believe, Wallingford and Wantage and then here. So it's, it's coming 13, 14 miles, <laughs> which uh, it's, a, it's a curious irony that people first came to live here because of the water. And now we're going to get our water from 15 miles away. I mean, think of that. <laughs> So what's it going to do to the level of the Thames, I wonder? Oh, the Thames has still got plenty, I think. <laughs> mm. well, the Environment Agency, they recently said that our water is going to run out in, oh, there was some statistic, by 2050 or something. Yes. Well, it'll be the same all over the world, you know. Mm. It'll be fighting over water rather than oil, perhaps. The oil will have run out by then. So. Uh, Future generations are going to face some challenges, <laughs> to be sure. <laughs>